writers had a great idea, which was basically to throw 13 people out of an airplane and have Jarvis tell Tony he can only carry four. So how in the world is there plummeting to their death? Is Iron Man going to be able to save them? And Tony begins to fly down and grab onto people and tells those people to grab onto the next person. And suddenly, with this great show of teamwork, you have 13 people all latched onto to each other with Iron Man blowing his propulsors to stop their fall. With something as complicated as you can imagine of people falling out of Air Force One and Iron Man ultimately saving them, how do you achieve it? And your first approach is, let's do it on the green screen stage. We can hang the actors. We have a lot of control. But our second uh, unit director came on board and said, I know the Red Bull skydiving team. Let's do a test. I don't believe a lot of people thought it could be done practically. And I'm like, I know we can do this for real. I actually got a bunch of the skydivers that we're using. And we went out to the airport and spent two days jumping and doing some of the harder various bits of the sequence. It was so successful that we said, let's shoot it this way. And I was still skeptical, thinking, are we going to get all these shots? And we start building custom costumes with hidden parachutes. Jake Brake is the one who did that. He's been doing that since the very first Moonraker when James Bond jumped out of the airplane with no parachute. He spent about two months building all these hidden parachutes and testing them. Eight days to shoot it, we ended up making 62 airplane loads, over 600 parachute jumps, 480 some hidden parachute jumps, which is by far bigger than any kind of a sequence like that's ever been done before. Watching dailies, it was truly terrifying. And seeing the cameraman point, you know, from 10,000 feet in the air and you see the ground approach, it's phenomenal. Having Iron Man in that scene and 13 people falling adds such excitement because it's visceral. You feel that they are really in midair. You can't really achieve that anywhere else. <laughs> Pretty proud of pulling it off. Not to mention that at the end, we continually swung them back and forth over Cape Fear River. That was the very last part of the sequence where I think they were about 80 or 90 feet up in the air. We started them zipping down, and as they come down over the water, then one after the other, we start releasing them from their zip lines. That was mostly the brainchild of Jim Churchman. What we didn't want to do the CG is we want real people, real water, real sky. We want, you know, real speed. It just makes it that much more epic. <laughs> This is a 165 ton crane stretched out about 160 feet in the air. We have another 90 ton crane that's stretched out to about 75 feet. And we basically have a 15 zip line rig set up uh, that's motivated by a vehicle. We run them up to 30 miles an hour, get the shots we need, and ultimately drop them in the water. It was a big deal. Came off amazingly flawless. Ready and action! The challenge of these films from the visual effects point of view is just the sheer massivity of the amount of shots and how we go globally to make sure that we get all of this done within the time that we have. The technology is always being perfected and getting better. One of the key things with with all visual effects is you want to make it spectacular and interesting, but you also want to try and make it as real as possible. I think what's really cool is that Iron Man has this heroic moment, but technically is super challenging. There's a certain way that you skydive to protect yourself and not just to dump. So we needed to feel like we were just, these, these bodies are dumping and they don't know what to do. You needed to make Iron Man look like he's in control and that he's diving, he's propelling himself from one person to another. And that is a very tricky thing to do because ultimately you're shooting it as you're skydiving. So you're shooting it as the plane is a vertical drop and you try and get some moments where you've got some horizontal play in there. 
the story, we're jumping from a 25, 30,000 foot altitude and you're falling all the way down to ground or sea level. One of the problems, obviously, when you're jumping out of a small plane and you're doing these stunts, is that you're shooting from anywhere from 10,000 feet down to 4,000 feet when the parachute's open. Pretty much every environment that you see has been created in CG. So we actually pick a look that we like, and then the company that did this digital domain, they went on and created this beautiful map paintings with the proper terrain at the different heights. We get high satellite images that we use as our reference, and then we move geometry around and move the coastline and animate waves, and then put in clouds and have clouds whipping past camera to imply that we're falling. I got you. In every shot, the skydivers are real. Some of the shots we did have to go with digi doubles for a few things, but the energy that you get from that shot, I don't know that you could have gotten any other way. Here's the plate uh, shot. They have their Iron Man stand-in and Heather. So we've got backpack and all kinds of issues that we have to work with. This is the shot. Not quite final, but where it's currently at. Getting Iron Man to stick to Heather was really, really challenging. They're moving and vibrating. The cameraman is moving and vibrating. The background is not moving nearly as much. At the beginning, we intended to use the real hand, but we found that um, we just couldn't get it to track right. So we ended up just going with a full CG hand and sleeve. And then, uh, here you go back into the real plate. From a compositing point of view, probably one of our most challenging sequences. In this case, the altitude in this particular shot is, is dramatically different. Obviously, adding in the, the Air Force One, the damage, all the effects work, and then making it look like Florida, and adding the cloud layers, and then adding you know, levels of atmosphere. And also to make the background look more interesting, we changed the focal length of the shot, which then, in order to make look correct, we then changed the trajectory of the falling divers. There are bits here and bits there that sort of that you collage them together and sometimes we have 10 layers of that and sometimes we have two layers of the real photography that we composite with the rest of the environment. It's been an incredible sequence to work on, but it's, uh, it's based on reality, which is the key thing. Hundreds of artists work on it. It's a frame by frame job. It's just handwork. It's just artistry and it's great to see it. These stunt people are phenomenal, and they were able to perform panic and fear in a way that if we would have had all the time in the world, we probably would have been able to do with CG humans, but we were able to get it with them, and it was great. That aerial sequence was a huge passion of mine. I really wanted it to come off perfectly without a flaw. That's one of the best experiences of my career. Everyone was on board. There was a lot of excitement and enthusiasm, and I think that's what led to the success of this. It's truly wonderful to watch. It's always a great prospect in movies to throw in what is surely an impossible task in front of a hero, where it looks like there's absolutely no way that the hero can get out of it, and then watch them proceed to, to figure it out. That's one of my favorite moments in the film. This was by far the biggest practical stunt scene we've ever done in any of our films. Bigger than anything in the previous Iron Man films, or bigger than anything in Avengers. And the fact that it's cut together so well is, is pretty exciting. All right, Jarvis, but it's only half done. We still gotta get through.